Hi everyone, you're tuned in to the first episode of Hadley Here and Now. This is a joint initiative between Hadley Media and the Select Board and town personnel to try to bring as much information that's relevant to the current affairs of the town of Hadley to you. Um, so I appreciate the fact that you've bothered to tune in. So today, uh, David, you want to talk a little bit about um, communication? This is something sure. that uh, be we're happy talking to. about. So uh, for those people who don't know, my name is David Nixon. I am the town administrator. Been your town administrator for about a dozen years. And uh, I remember back to a time when we could reasonably uh, rely upon the local newspaper to send a reporter to each and every select board meeting. And they would do a reasonably good job of reporting the salient facts that came out of town business at that meeting. Mm -hmm. Now, for whatever reason, we haven't seen a reporter from any of the papers for a very long time, and so I think that the select board very wisely has decided to step up the communication between what happens in town hall and the people of Hadley. So there's a number of things that we're trying. Hadley here and now is a, a good first step, I think. Uh, I think there are some guiding principles that we should uh, keep in mind that first that Communication obviously has to be two-way, but it's not just that we're asking people to consume information from town hall, but also provide us with constructive feedback. That the, that the uh, focus be on community solving, um, problem solving, and make sure that the best talents and resources of the entire community are brought to, to focus so that we can collectively address some of the challenges and opportunities that face the town of Hadley. Mm -hmm. and then finally, to be proactive, uh, rather than reacting to information that may be out there, get the word out that uh, we're doing good work, that we're doing a lot of positive things. We have a lot to say about what we do. We have a lot of ideas that we can gather from the community, and that should come to us by our own efforts. Yeah. So I think those are three guiding principles. We could go on and talk about Ooh. those at length. Yeah. But, um, I think, uh, I think it's certainly safe to say that there's always information out there. It's just a question of whether or not it's good information or bad information. Right. Well, right. It, all information is useful in some way. In some way. In some <laughs> way. Good. Well, in that spirit, and, and uh, thank you for reminding me, since you introduced yourself, I sh probably should make sure that everybody at home knows that I'm Molly Keegan, and I'm the current chair of the Happy Select Board. So not presume that everyone knows who we are. <laughs> um, so today, um, you and I had spoken a little bit um, prior to this and thought that the topic of a special town meeting um, is something that everyone probably doesn't know about. And it is something that we'll be talking more about this evening at the July 12th Select Board and Tri Board meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that's very unusual for having to have three town meetings. Right. And right now we're planning on having a special, special town meeting um, that's going to be very much focused on um, land and building issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're thinking that that's going to happen sometime in August. Right. So uh, want to talk about that today? Yeah, so a little bit of background. It's our, it's our standard practice to hold the spring town meeting the first uh, Thursday in May. And that we're in play. We do all the budget work. We do all of the... The, the regulatory and, and, uh, and, and required articles. Uh, we do a lot of the planning. We do a lot of the CPA articles. Then we do most of our business during the spring town meeting. But then we always have an October or November town meeting where we make adjustments to the budget, basically because information comes in after the uh, the town meeting. The town, the state uh, budget is settled always in July, so. Mm -hmm. We get new information from them. And then there's the capital. And free cash. And the free, free cash. cash. Get the free cash yeah. uh, certified in uh, August and September, which we then use a lot of that to support the one-time expenses within the budget and uh, the capital articles. So we do a lot of our capital planning and purchasing during the um, uh, fall, October, November town meeting. But now we have that in a special town meeting for August. Right. Right. Now, that is scheduled for August 3rd. Mm -hmm. I think that date is likely to be pushed back. I think so too. Uh, it yeah. seems like we're rushing a little bit and we're not prepared to present to the uh, voters the best information that we can. Right. right. So this um, 
the special town meeting right now, the warrant contains four articles. Uh, one is for land uh, and three are for buildings. Mm -hmm. Senior center, the library, and the fire substation. Mm -hmm. And the land would be an opportunity for us to acquire nine acres of land in the north end of town uh, mm -hmm. under the Chapter 61A program. Right. So before we get into the, the nitty gritty of the warrant articles, mm -hmm. um, I know you and I are both in favor of making sure that folks have some context and, and some history. History can be very valuable. Mm -hmm. So for example, you know, if, when you were a kid and you put your hand on a hot stove and you burned it, aha, uh -huh, one knows that one shouldn't do that again. Um, get, so, your get your brother to do it. That's right. And for some of us, we also know that, you know, perhaps, just perhaps, the United States and Russia haven't always been BFFs. Mm -hmm. um, and it's important to remember that. Mm -hmm. So um, I think having a history on, on how this all came about would be important for folks. Right. And I'm hoping, uh, I'm thinking a good starting point is to go back to the vote that was taken to sell, sell North Hadley Hall, because right. that really kicked all of, you know, much of this was kicked off at that point. Mm -hmm. So um, can you just kind of remind us a little bit of the time frame and, and what happened at that point? Right, so it was about four years ago that we decided that we would sell North Hadley Village Hall. At the time, people decided that its uh, repair costs were far above what the town was willing to uh, pay, and that was north of $2 million, mm -hmm. uh, and that, uh, that the building was generally not serving a municipal purpose. Mm -hmm. And so there was a call on town meeting floor to sell the property. We ended up uh, uh, advertising this. It took us about two years to prepare the advertisement, and part of that delay was based upon the uh, need to craft a very, very specific historic preservation restriction or covenant right. or that so that the, the building wouldn't be lost, at least on the exterior, whatever happened in the interior could happen uh, according to the buyer's uh, wishes. Um, that created, that vote created a debate as to whether that was the best way to uh, use that municipal resource. Right. So there's some concern about how we're we going to provide fire services mm -hmm. in the north end of town, mm -hmm. where were we going to store the new fire equipment that was coming online, mm -hmm. uh, what were we going to do about communications, which have always been a problem that we finally licked up in the north end of town. And so I think people decided that maybe that wasn't the best way to go about it. The select board ultimately rejected a uh, proposal for uh, purchase of the property. And a petitioned article was presented to the voters last October to um, build a uh, fire substation on that property. And at that time, the, the theory was um, certainly the town didn't own any more land right. in North Hadley. And the fire substation, um, you know, if we could save the cost of, of the land purchased by putting right. it on land that we already owned, it right. seemed to make some economic sense to the extent that that would, would work. Right. Um, and is that the same meeting that a vote was taken actually rejecting the purchase of a parcel of land? That was a couple of years before. There were uh, various attempts by um, uh, the town to look at uh, property, the Montgomery Rose mm -hmm. greenhouse property up by the Sunderland uh, line, and there was a nine-acre parcel that uh, was offered for five hundred and fifty thousand dollars at the end of Stockbridge. At the end of Stockbridge mm -hmm. intersection of Stockbridge and River Road. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, at the time, there was an opportunity to buy these two properties, but no real well-developed plans what to do with those properties. Right. There were some sewer line extension issues with the Montgomery Rose property, uh, and then there was questions about uh, infrastructure with the, with the, uh, the nine acres on Stockbridge. Mm -hmm. okay. And I think it's important to remind people, you know, kind of the, the journey we've been on. Um, you know, you and I both know that in a, in a perfect world, you would have all of the information necessary to make a well-informed decision put mm -hmm. in front of you, um, and the time would be right. Mm -hmm. But that's not life, um, right. whether it's for the town of Hadley or decision-making in your own home. I mean, life is very fluid, mm -hmm. and facts change. And mm -hmm. I think that's what we've experienced um, over the past few years as well. Right. So the purchase of that property was rejected at a point in time. 
Right. Montgomery rose. It was a decision not to move forward. Right. And then, to your point, at the um, the last fall town meeting, the voters said yes, go ahead and move forward with the substation on that parcel of land. On the ball field on north of the North Hadley Village Hall. Right. That's right. They raised. $2.9 million, which at the time uh, seemed to be adequate to do the design and the construction and the equipping of that building. Mm -hmm. uh, they have since run into two issues on that project. We have a designer, we have an owner's project manager who's managing the project. They've run into two issues, one of which is, is that they didn't ask for enough money for the design that they had in mind. Mm -hmm. So they're short about $500,000 on just the design. But they did some um, subsurface soil analysis and determined that there is a layer of soil which is in unstable mm. at that property. You don't want to put a building on unstable soil. Do you, you don't want to see the yeah. thing sink over, fall, and sink down, fall over, and catch on fire. No, you don't. Okay, good. Uh, so it, the remediation of that uh, property the, 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 at the North Hadley Village uh, ball field was going to cost about three hundred and seventy-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So there's an article that there for eight hundred and ten thousand eight hundred dollars for both the soil remediation and the additional money for the uh, the, the dis building the design that they would prefer. Okay. And when I say they, I'm talking about the town. Mm -hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I think there's more to this story. So yes, there was another new piece of information that came up between the time that town meeting voted mm -hmm. to move forward with this project and today. And that has to do with that same parcel of land that was uh, we were asked to a town meeting to buy for $550,000 a couple of years back. Right, so for, we had the opportunity to buy the property for $550,000. We didn't have a real plan to do to do anything with the property, so we decided that uh, we wouldn't take it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, but no thanks. That property is under Chapter 61A, uh, protected farmland status, mm -hmm. whereby the, uh, the owner of the property gets a break on taxes to keep the property as open space. When they sell the property, the town has the right of first refusal. They have put that property on the market for $400,000, $150,000 less than the price that we were asked to purchase a few years back. Okay. And we have the right of first refusal, which we have to exercise within a 120-day period. So now, given that the cost of the land is roughly equivalent to the soil remediation issue on the other parcel, uh, the town is now looking at maybe it makes sense to buy a larger parcel mm -hmm. of land, develop it in the way that uh, makes sense for the protection of the uh, of the North Hadley community for fire services uh, and not try to put the, the, a smaller project in on a smaller pro lot that has uh, yeah. soil issues. Right. So that is one of the articles is for $400,000. Okay. And given the timing of when we found out about this right. and had time to act, um, certainly one question that I've been asked for people who are aware of the situation or well, why couldn't you just deal with this at the fall town meeting as planned? Okay, so we received the notice to the, the intent to sell back on May 18th, so mm -hmm. if you have a rough calculation of 90 days, that takes us to September 18th and our mm -hmm. October town meeting doesn't happen until October 5th. Right, so, so we, we weren't would, gonna make it. We were not gonna make it. Okay. Um, and again, the thought is this is an important enough decision and an opportunity, I should say, mm -hmm. that um, it's something that we do want to bring to town meeting. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And to your point earlier that you talked about surprises do happen, life yeah. continues when you're making other plans. We do have a five-year capital plan whereby we try to plan out purchases of equipment, purchases of land, development of parcels for other uses, any kind of feasibility studies, any kind of infrastructure work on roads, bridges, water, sewer, stormwater, uh, the, the dike. Um, so we, do, we actually do have a plan, but you're quite right, it's a living plan. Things happen and things don't always happen the way that you expect them to. And so this was not on our capital plan, but it is an opportunity that uh, mm -hmm. we, should, we really need to explore. 
And I know that that'll be brought up by the select board in a public hearing tonight. Right, right. And again, you know, this is just a conversation between uh, me and you. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, you know, we're not here to advocate um, really just to get the facts out to to the folks at home who are, are listening. Right. right. So um, there'll be more opportunity for that as we approach. Absolutely. Yeah, approach the special town meeting. Mm -hmm. So um, so we've talked about uh, we've talked about the North Hadley substation and where that stands and this mm -hmm. opportunity for a parcel of land. Um, there are a couple of other articles that are out there. One of them having to do with the library, and that's a pretty easy one to talk about. So maybe we can bring folks up to speed on where we stand with the um, possible. Okay. library building project. All right. So this project started several years ago with the development of the library master plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the Goodwin Memorial Library which was built in the early part of the 20th century if I remember correctly, 1905. Somebody's going to remind me it was 1903 or something All like right. that, but I mean close enough. You're wrong. I'm wrong, <laughs> again. Um, so this is a building that has served the town of Hadley very well for many, many, many generations. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been very uh, well maintained and too by the trustees. Very well maintained and, and modernized where they can. But the, the building has significant challenges, one of which is just ADA uh, 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 compliance. You, know, you have these tiny bathrooms in the basement mm -hmm. with very, very limited access for, um, for anybody who needs assistance. Um, there is no elevator to get to the second floor. Uh, there is knob and tube wiring there that uh, needs to be replaced and there's a project that is looking into that right now. Uh, there's inadequate uh, meeting space there, inadequate uh, shelf space, and some parking. of the parking. And then you, yeah. you know, the list goes on. It's a great building for 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so the library is, is planned to build a new library and uh, they've, uh, they have applied for a grant for about 50% of the construction. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, was approved, that application for the grant was approved by town meeting at the, back in October mm -hmm. and we will find out tomorrow July 13th. July 13th, whether they received that grant or not. And if they received it, A, how much of a grant are they going to get? And B, what is the timing of that grant? Right, where it falls in the queue, because the right. state has kind of a high priority, middle priority, right? Right. Ranking right. system. And, you know, I think the other, um, uh, so what's important to note there is that uh, tomorrow's a critical day in terms of the library building project mm -hmm. because. It's either thumbs up or thumbs down on that grant money. Um, if it's thumbs up, then that article to proceed with the building will in fact be on the special special town meeting warrant, correct? Mm -hmm. um, if it's a thumbs down, well, then clearly we'll be passing over that. We'll be passing over it and we'll be going back to the capital plan which talks about the remediation of knob and tube wiring, knob and tube, accessibility yeah. and an elevator and all those other fine things that we do need to do. Okay, all right, good. So then I guess that brings us... So, the, well, yes. the, the cost for this uh, right now is estimated to be three and a half million dollars. The town's The town's share, share of mm -hmm. that entire project. Right. Entire because project. there's also a component for private fundraising. Private fundraising, yeah. as well as use of state money that they've been uh, uh, storing away for this project project for a long time. Right. And it's not often that the town um, has the opportunity to get literally a 100% return from the state on its investment. If I had an investment that I could make where I would get everything back that I put in, I'd certainly take it. Right, right. So, you know, and I know some people, thank you for bringing that up, because some people have asked about that. Um, and right now there really is no program at the state level for anything other than school-related buildings and libraries. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have that type of program for senior centers or, or DPWs or anything else, although it's been discussed, but it right. doesn't exist. Right, and there's some there's some road and bridge infrastructure money that, that's available to cities and towns every year, mm -hmm. and there's historic preservation grants, but in general the whole grant landscape has been shrinking for the last 10 years or so as the money becomes scarcer right. at the state level and it's harder to hand out lots of money mm -hmm. uh, to not in the way that they used to. Um, so they're much more willing to see uh, matching grants 
matching funds for mm -hmm. their grants, uh, to direct technical assistance, is, uh, like the Commonwealth Compact right. that we went through. Uh, you know, those are, the, those are becoming more common. Right. But outlays right. of... Although the state's having trouble right now, you know, getting its own house in order. Absolutely. So we, we can't rely on that type of activity going forward. Yeah. Um, Okay, so we've talked about, you know, again, uh, three of the articles at this point, and then the fourth article relates to the Senior Center. Mm -hmm. So, again, the Senior Center has its own story, starting with um, uh, really what kicked the whole Senior Center discussion off in earnest was the library following the state program um, to say, okay, if you're going to build a new library, where can you build it? And in that um, kind of discovery or due diligence phase, it was determined that probably the best location for the library um, that would give it the greatest um, opportunity to get the grant money would be the site of the former Hooker School, which mm -hmm. is right next door. Um, and the first question that was asked was, well, what on earth is going to happen to the seniors? Right. So then we were off and running on the, another building project. So the library committee uh, trustees decided that the senior center would be the best place for the, the for the, the new library because of the requirements of the grant, which is that you have a lot of visibility, that you're not tucking this away on the back lot, that uh, for a number of different reasons, close to the center of town. The town the, already owns the land. Town already owns mm -hmm. the land, and so the, the, the senior center. Uh, current senior center rose to the top. Uh, there was some discussion and exploration of using the Russell School for a number of reasons that, uh, that turned out to be cost prohibitive right. and not well suited for, for a library anyways. Right. Okay. Right. So uh, this engendered a lot of communication between the senior, the Council on Aging and the library trustees and many, many means. Right. But it was eventually agreed that if if the town would support a, the construction of the senior center on the back lot of the senior center uh, location, then they would support the, uh, the library construction um, at the senior center. And by the way, the grant for the library would cover half the, the demolition. demolition costs of our this Hooker School. Right. There's uh, work going on right now with the Historic Commission to preserve a record of the of the Hooker School in order to maintain our continuity with our traditions and with our heritage. Mm -hmm. So lots of different work going on at this point in order to make this happen. Should the library get their grant, which we'll find out tomorrow. Right. But so and I, and I know we're getting close to um, our allotted time. So kind of kind of wrapping up where we stand with the article. What's the point of the article on the special town meeting? Well, we we raised. Um, $5.3 million at the October town meeting. Mm -hmm. And again, it turned out that that was not quite enough money to build the senior center mm -hmm. at the design that was preferred by the Council on Aging. Which was a 12,000 12, square, square foot, foot change, yeah. Yes, with, uh, with uh, lots of parking. Right. Because that uh, was one of the important things for the seniors, mm -hmm. is that there would be adequate parking, which is, uh, makes a lot of sense. Sure. So they ran into site issues, not the same as at the fire substation, but they've ran into the cost overrun on the design for 12,000 square feet. That combined works out to $1.8 billion. So there's an article to raise that additional money to build the preferred design for the senior center mm -hmm. on the August town meeting warrant. Okay. And if the, for whatever reason, that article were to fail at town meeting, they um, have an alternate design for a, a somewhat downsized senior center right. as well. But they'll be speaking to this at the... They'll be speaking to that, but I think, you know, one of the things that we need to think about is that what does a 9,500 square foot building get for us uh, mm -hmm. in terms of programs, in terms of services, in terms of functions? You know, what's the better value? Is it a larger building or the smaller building? And I think we don't know the answers for all of that. And that's what we're working on right now. Right, right. So I think it's safe to say then, you know, collectively our goal, and again, we'll have more discussion about this at the, the July 12th tri tri-board meeting, mm -hmm. um, is we want to get as much information in front of the taxpayers um, at town meeting so right. that when the decisions are being made, 
they have it with the, the most current and, and uh, correct bundle of facts possible mm -hmm. to make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I know that we're going to continue our efforts of communicating to the taxpayers uh, about our various plans mm -hmm. and that we have public forums uh, scheduled and we have uh, obviously lots of meetings which are televised. Right. But meetings that are not televised are published on the uh, town website, and people yeah. should uh, feel free to attend any open meeting that we uh, that we have because there's going to be lots and lots of discussion about this. Okay. And we're gearing up for the fall town meeting anyway, so we have a lot to plan. So for. no moss growing on you, is no, it? No, not at all. All right, good. All right. Well, thank you, uh, thank you for your willingness to participate um, in this first episode of Hadley here and now. So again, thank you for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you again sometime soon.